Oh, hello. So, I don't think I've ever done a video on tearing down a really cool, very clean JBL 1-inch compression driver. This one happens to be, you guessed it, a 2421A. And uh, this has an Alnico magnet. This uh, is out of the first generation of the JBL 4430 studio monitor. Single 15, single compression driver with the, I believe it's a 2344 uh, biradial horn, also affectionately known as the butt cheeks horn. Some people call them the Dolly Parton for, you know, use your imagination. <laughs> Uh, 100 by 100 degree, uh, radiation patterns, great horn. Uh, one of the things that makes that particular monitor, and I don't have it in the shop, this, these drivers came, uh, uh, via transport from New York to have me service them and, uh, recharge them, clean them and put new diaphragms in them, uh, among a bunch of other things. So, uh, what are we doing? Oh, what I was going to say was the, the 4430 and also the 4435, they are physically time-aligned. And if you've never heard the difference between time-aligned and not time-aligned physically, it is not trivial. The uh, audio image uh, just comes into focus when the woofer and the tweeter, in this comp case the compression driver, the voice coils are in physical alignment with one another. So phase coherent. Uh, so what are we doing? I've already, I've discharged this and I'm just going to take it apart layer by layer. This is the loading cap, which actually goes to this driver. Cause you can see there's the foam rot and it just makes a mess. And you can see it's all over the place and it just makes a mess. So, what I've done is I've cleaned out the foam in this, this one, and I replaced it with a foam damping pad. Here's an, or I'm sorry, a felt damping pad. Can't talk. Uh, that one's going to go in here after I clean that out. So there's the back cap, the loading cap. I have discharged it and actually, oh, no magnet. That's because the magnet is right there. But it really helps to have the magnetizer to be able to discharge these things to take them apart uh, with not a whole lot of struggle. So I'm going to take, obviously, take off the top plate, clean it up. Here is the phase plug. This is the bottom of the phase plug to keep debris out of the gap. You can see the, the phase plug sits on top of the throat. These throats, unlike the uh, two inch, like the 2440, 2441, those drivers, those big drivers have a Bakelite throat and they have a tendency to crack if, if maybe the magnet gets dropped and the magnet shifts and ends up shearing off or cracking the throat. These are metal. Uh, probably a non-ferrous metal, like a cast aluminum or zinc or something like that. I'm not sure what the, what the material is. I think it's a zinc because it kind of looks like a, uh, looks like a sure, <coughs> excuse me, SM58 microphone body. And I believe those are zinc and those are like tuh, bulletproof, truck proof. You can drive over them and they won't break. So... Um, this one, the screen, there is a bug screen that goes on here. So I punched, I punched, uh, new screens out. These were actually from JBL for the two inch driver, but, uh, I, I didn't order them. I just punched them out of the, the, the bigger screen, but that goes on there. It's a seven eighths with a seven eighths inch punch. That's going to get bonded onto there. And then the face plug fits on top of it and it's all nice and centered. The magnet slips over the, the throat 
and is pretty much held in place by the throat. And then this is going to get these wonderful radian uh, aluminum diaphragms with the mylar surround. Now, if my recommendation is for monitoring and, uh, in other words, playback, monitoring and hi-fi applications, the Radian is really superior. It's just a cleaner, uh, more transparent <coughs> diaphragm than the JBL titanium diaphragm. Well, this one actually was aluminum, but JBL doesn't make the aluminum diaphragms anymore, so the the 2425 titanium diaphragm is the only one left that JBL makes. And uh, if if I had to choose between, provided the quality of the JBL is going to be good, using the Radian for live sound or the JBL for live sound, if you're going to use it for live sound, I would tend towards the titanium because it's overall tougher. If you just want a much better listening experience for hi-fi or studio monitoring, go with the Radian. It's a superior diaphragm for uh, fidelity. So anyway, uh, and then you can see there's uh, some rust in the housing, so that's going to get cleaned out. So full-service teardown, cleaning, and recharge. It's a couple of hundred bucks to do this uh, because it... It's kind of tedious, takes time, got to be careful, discharge it, recharge it, but uh, this is kind of key because this is how they used to do it. Here's a felt pad that came out of an old one. That's how they used to do it. Then they went to foam, and the foam just makes a mess, and you can see that, so... Clean all, we're going to clean, clean all that out, put that in, they'll be ready to go, and they'll be trouble-free for years. So, uh, All right. Maybe I'll do a, a chapter two when it's uh, all done. Okay, thanks, bye. All right, chapter two, second driver, 2421A from the 4430 studio monitors. Uh, early version, new felt pad, new radian diaphragm, customer supplied the diaphragm. I'm going to pause it and then we'll sweep it. All right, here we're going to sweep this 2421. Okay, it's ready to monitor. Talk to you later. These are off to New York.